Hello all, uh, the practitioner here. Bachelor of Science student, chemistry major, mathematics minor, magician, parapsych researcher, technical agnostic, and Fortean skeptic. Um, I've been doing some thinking about um, known possible laws or possible explanations for various paranormal phenomena, and I was running through the list of uh, ones that had already been covered, uh, you know, um, statistical bi uh, biases, uh, experimental artifacts, and the various things, uh, and something occurred to me. Something, it was so simple, I didn't realize why I hadn't caught it, why I hadn't caught it before. Um, Micropsychokinesis. Um, the, the, for those of you who are for those of you who've already watched my videos before, you know what this is. For those of you who haven't watched my videos before, um, let me explain the difference between uh, TK, or macro telekinesis, which I'm very highly skeptical of, and micro psychokinesis, which I'm a little less so skeptical of, owing to the uh, plenty of peer-reviewed studies on this. Um, basically, macro telekinesis is moving of psi wheels, moving of various things. Micro psychokinesis might be something along the lines of something that would influence probability. Um, you know, um, uh, you know, dice influence. Um, but one of the best uh, examples of what micropsychokinetic studies have been since the late 1960s was something called random event or random number generators. And what these were were these were little uh, these were um, generators that were based on electronic noise or based on radioactive decay that were designed. Um, and then what ha uh, what they did was that um, in some of them a Geiger counter would um, detect individual atoms going off a um, uh, going uh, you know. Uh, Decay, uh, you know, decaying off a, a radioactive sample, and then a computer would extrapolate uh, random numbers from those uh, radio from those uh, random sources. Uh, the electronic noise generators, um, the electronic, uh, a computer would read the electronic noise coming off one of these circuits, and then um, you know generate numbers from it. Now the thing is, it occurred to me. Anyway, they did some. They did quite a few uh, studies on this, and uh, they've they've had in my book uh, some highly suggestive evidence. Note that I said only highly suggestive, of uh, you know not you know. Uh, Pear has been one of the most controversial, but there have been others. You know, uh, replications by Dick J. Bierman, exploratory studies, um, plenty of work by Helmut Schmidt. Uh, a few other laboratories worldwide have managed to get some uh, you know some significant results with this. Um, but anyway, here's the thing which has uh, actually occurred to me about this. People are looking for these. You know, uh, well, what do these phenomena mean, or you know, how do they extrapolate? And I'll give you a very basic example. They don't mean diddly squat beyond their own experimental data, and I'll tell you why. Assuming that uh, these phenomena exist, and we're not, you know, and they're not all just experimental artifacts or incorrect statistical interpretations, or even the the, the theory which I like to purport a lot, statistical flukes, you know, statistically significant by chance, you know, in areas where there is no experimental artifacts or statistical flukes. Assuming that there is an effect, it's one it's one that's relatively simple. We know from the Heisenberg uncertainty principle that um, that uh, co the quantum effects, photons, uh, photons moving, um, electron electrons and their wave patterns and stuff like that, are inherently unpredictable and random. They are random at heart. But when you make an observation, and this is with um, technology, there's always been technology involved. There, um, when you say, for example, in a, in a double slit experiment, when you try to measure what uh, what slit it went through, you promptly end up influencing the result. It doesn't necessarily matter whether you're intense there or not. The very fact, that the very act of measurement, does that. Now, people would say like, "Oh, well, it's just your technology. There's no consciousness involved," and I agree with you, uh, to a point. Allow me to allow me to postulate this with you. Every single one of these random number generators is working off a computer which is observing the electronic noise, or a Geiger counter which is detecting when the atoms are going off. That's the observation part. And then the sci and then the experimenter, you know, the or the subject of the experiment would be no different than a scientist taking a measurement of when these radioactive particles decayed or or how these uh or how the electronic noise worked out. Um, you know, and, and of course, like, you know, maybe the proof of it, you know, in terms of comparing uh you know, uh, experimenters being there, uh, baseline runs, you know, with nobody being there, um, and the like. You know, maybe there is a slightly conscious element in the terms of, uh, uh, you know, in terms of interacting with the computer itself, but there might not necessarily be anything more than that. And the point is, is that, remember, there's even still debate about the mainstream Heisenberg uncertainty principle, whether consciousness plays an element or not. That's the whole uh, argument of the Copenhagen interpretation versus the many worlds interpretation. And the same thing could be happening here with these uh, so-called uh, psychokinesis experiments. Um, and the thing is that you know with these random number generators, people are you know concerned like, oh, it's all woo-woo, it's all parasite. You know, this talking about you know influencing the world at a large scale. The answer to that is no. If these micro psychokinetic uh, effects exist, assuming that they do, 
you know, then theoretically speaking, they, uh, because of the fact that a Geiger counter or a computer is measuring this random data before it's presenting it to the human observer, it's no different than a standard double slit or any other quantum experiment. It is literally no different. And it would fall under the exact same possibilities of, di uh, of disputes of many worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics or of, uh, or of, psych or of, um, uh, of, of conscious observ observation going on here. There is, li you know, there is literally no difference between the two. And it would just simply be like the possible observer effect of the Heisenberg uncertainty principle playing a part here, okay? As for macro level psychokinesis, like uh, say for example, like uh, like millions of people thinking worldwide and being able to affect an event. Well, the co the Global Consciousness Project, which has been going on for a while, they've claimed that they've had uh, statistically significant results of a whole bunch of minds focused on one particular event, which have affected the random data, which off these random uh, event generators. Well, due to the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, or due to the you know the hyper focus you know of the observer effect, that would be within the laws of physics. However, it would be impossible for, say, a group of minds to collectively prey on something and for that, uh, for their influence to be able to work on a macro level without some sort of, um, you know, other physical, ex you know, external variable influencing it. You see what I mean? This wouldn't go above, beyond the micro level. This, you know, it, it's completely mirroring. If you take a look at these, uh, these so-called random, uh, you know, at these microcyclokinesis experiments with random number generators and the like, and what we're looking at with, um, you know, with double slit experiments and the like, there's absolutely no difference between the two. They both, you know, they both got the same contradictions to them. They've both got the the same possibilities of, of conscious observer or not. You know, um, if anything, the only reason I say we should look into microcyclokinesis is one more, uh, you know, and compare those experiments to what happens when, say, nobody observes the data or what have you, is that it might not, it might uh, give a better idea in double slit experiments as to whether or not, um, you know, a conscious observer has happened or not. You know, uh, you know, say for example, uh, someone uh, say try to influence which slit the uh, the uh, photon goes through rather than just simply observing it. You know, try something like that with the you know with uh, with standard quantum mechanics experiments just to see if there is a conscious effect in play here. You know, interacting with the uh, with the technology. But the point is that bottom line, um, we're dealing with the exact same physics here. So. Um, if you want to do research on it, do research on the double slit experiments and try to see if this stretches. If it doesn't replicate, then we know it's just a standard uh, Heisenberg uncertainty principle thing combined with a statistical fluke. It's just as simple as that. Anyway, uh, I hope that helps. But um, again, like I said, just bear in mind that um, the simpler explanation, it's just no different than the uh, possible observer effect of the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. You know, there doesn't seem to be really any difference. So. Why, why look for plurality when there, when there need not be? Why, why look for some sort of unknown psychokinetic effect here when, uh, you know, or trying to find some connection to quantum mechanics when at least in micropsychokinesis it would be no different than the, uh, than the observer effect? You know, literally no different and still subject to the same uh, qu contradictions and the, still the same different many theories that are already out there about the already existing observer effect. You know, <laughs> you know why, why should there be any difference in terms of approaching this? Just a thought, people. Anyway, that's my uh, that's my uh, that's my possibility on it. Just um, just throwing an idea out there for you. Uh, I'm still a skeptic, and uh, still yours truly a skeptic, and still inquiring, and uh, still open to new information. Toodles.